Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul on December 3rd, 2018. I want to share a dream I had two nights ago. The Holy Spirit has led me to share this dream, and so I must be obedient and, and share this dream. Now in this dream, I'm in this very large church. It's like you're it's like one of those huge churches that has a stage. And you know, the stage is kind of elevated. And as you as I as I, I'm on the back of the stage, I'm I'm standing on the back of the stage and uh no one really knows I'm even there. I'm kind of just in the back, and it's uh, it's kind of dark back there and stuff, you know, so you wouldn't just see me standing there. But further up front on the stage, there's a pastor on the left in a, in a nice suit, and there's a pastor on the right, and he's also in a nice suit. And you look out, and it's just, I'm telling you, hundreds of and hundreds of faith uh, faces in the crowd eager for a word from God hungry for a move of God I mean I could see it in their eyes they needed Jesus they needed a move of God they needed the fire of the Holy Spirit and the pastors on the left and the right they stood there and they said nothing and to me, what I had discerned is they they had lost the audience's captivity. The congregation was not interested in what they had to say. And they were like falling asleep. And the people in the crowd, I could feel their disappointment. They came for a move of God. They came for a word of God. And it was silence. And it was as if they had run out of things to say. And I couldn't help but notice that the pastor on the left and the pastor on the right did not have any Bibles in their hand. They had just been kind of winging it because they had run out of things to say. And now they've, the audience has lost hope. The congregation has lost hope. And they're hungrier than they ever been. Because if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, the Beatitudes in Matthew says you shall be filled. And that's what they were doing. And I had a feeling they were getting ready to just get up and walk out of church. And the Holy Spirit told me, he said, go forward. And I moved forward on the center of the stage and I was dressed so casual that I looked out of place. It, surrounded by business suits and stuff and I, I just it I didn't mind I was just obeying God I stepped forward and then they both turned and they looked at me and at first they were like rejecting me because of my outward appearance I could tell they're like oh no who's this but then as I got closer they discerned Jesus Christ in me Amen. They discerned. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. <clears throat> they discerned the Jesus Christ that dwells within me. And they like, they, they, they suddenly lost all fear. And they said, go ahead and speak. And I walked down right in the middle of them to the front of the, the stage. And I looked out at all the people. And I said, Holy Spirit, give me the words to say to your people. And I looked up at the crowd, standing there, feeling naked almost among everybody, dressed so nice. And I said, would someone here please just praise Jesus? Would you just stop and praise Jesus? Would you just drop to your knees and praise our living God? Surely he's done something for you. If someone would just open their heart and open their mouth and praise our God and his son, Jesus Christ. And the place erupted 
erupted in praise. It literally, the Holy Spirit just dropped out in there and people began all over to praise Jesus and thank Jesus. And I fell to my knees in the center of the stage and I began to weep. And when I had woken up, the, the Holy Spirit instantly revealed to me the meaning of this dream. And then today now, two days later after the dream, I received a word of knowledge. And so <clears throat> the interpretation to this dream was that revival and moves of God, they don't start with a huge flame. They start by one tiny kindle of praise. From your heart to the throne room of Jesus Christ, meaning it and knowing it by faith, just praising him, not because you need anything or want anything, praising him for who he is in your life and what he's done in your life and what he did at Calvary on that cross. And it, start, it starts with one person, with one kindle, of praise and it grows and it grows and it grows and the Holy Spirit is showing me that in the month of December here into 2019 that that we could have the biggest move of God we've ever seen if we would just open our mouth and sincerely praise him and thank him and then today the word of knowledge I received was your homes are on fire but your churches have grown cold. And it hit me so hard. I'm telling you, there's a move of God right now that you want to be a part of. And he sent me here to tell the whole world, anybody that will listen, you could be a part of this just by opening your heart and your mouth and confessing praises to Jesus Christ right there where you are. Whether it be in your church or in your home or in your car, that the, he will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out blessings upon you and your family, and you will begin to see a change in this season. And I'm not talking about the type of blessings you could go to the store and buy or get online and shop for. I'm talking about blessings that can't be bought. They were bought with the blood of Jesus. Family members saved, alcoholics healed, sickness fleeing, depression lifting off groups and groups of people and being replaced with the joy of the Lord that you haven't felt in so long. God wants to give you that and Christ paid the price for it and you just must open your mouth and praise him. <clears throat> so I'm delivering this message and I'm working on a second message. I'm working on a longer message, and I'm going to obediently share it. I'm doing some scripture studies. I had a ministry friend come by yesterday and pray for me and lay hands on me. And I'm going to tell you, that was the first time someone has laid hands on me to pray. Physically, in my presence, laid hands on me to pray in over seven months. And God knew I needed it, but I also knew that day was coming. A restoration a refreshing, a renewal, a fresh fire. And I have one person to thank for it, that's Jesus Christ. I thank Jesus Christ. My brother in the ministry who did come by, he also brought a word. It says, and I'll read it for you, he actually wrote it down. He received it in prayer, drove all the way over to my house, about 45 minutes, and wrote it down. It says, you tell Paul, my compassions are new every morning. Lamentations 3, 22, and 23. This brother's name is Dean. I've mentioned him before on here. He runs a type of prison ministry. I love this brother. And I'm telling you, when you could, you need to know this. Someone listening needs to know this. When you confess with your heart 
that you are and ask for forgiveness of your sins to Jesus Christ. The moment you do that, you are forgiven. And then you wake up the next day. You need to know that God, according to the Holy Word and not man's opinion, God has forgotten those sins as far as the east is from the west. He remembers those sins no more. You may continue to wallow in them. You may continue to ask over and over for forgiveness for the same things that you're already forgiven for. You may still remember your sins. Your, your parents may remember your sins. Your children may remember your past and your sins that you've given testimony over. The devil may even bring them up and remind you and whisper it right in your ear. But there's one person that doesn't remember, but that's God. Through Jesus Christ. He remembers them no more. And that's what matters. In your life today is that Jesus Christ remits your sins and paid for those sins not who's reminding you of them because that's not God because his word that he cannot go against and he's not a man that he should lie says he forgets them so if you're dwelling on past sin you've been forgiven for you need to know not only does God not remember those sins and Jesus cleansed you with the blood of Jesus, with his blood shed on the cross, he redeemed you from those sins and reconciled you back to a God who loves you so much. But also, according to this word of knowledge here in Lamentations 3 and 22, it said, it is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. God has a compassion and a love for you that you will never fully understand until you're in heaven with him. If you read all about everything this man went through in this chapter, and you see that he says, but I have hope. And you remember this word that is completely biblical that the Holy and that dream and you would just praise Jesus your whole entire life could change right now through Christ our Lord I love you all I've missed you all I have a very important a message for you that's going to be called you must keep your guard up and I'm ready and willing to share. And I will be back. I'm not sure when. I just wanted to say hi to everybody. I've missed you. I've received a lot of warnings for our future from God. We need to get together, church, and praise him. We need to get together, church, and praise our king. We need to unite in unity and faith and love and joy and receive the blessings promised to us by our Father who art in heaven according to his perfect, unfallible world and begin to praise him and watch the biggest move of God in our lives of spiritual blessings we have ever seen, family members seen, young and old, people knocking on your door to hear the word of God. It is in you. It's time for it to come out. 